Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. So what you're looking at here is a starting solenoid for, you know, your 50cc to like 250cc all-terrain vehicle. And I wanted to open this up for a couple of reasons. Um, I wanted to see how sturdy the contacts were inside. And this one died, so I wanted to see exactly... Um, how it worked and what it died of. So, um, just quickly, um, the way this works is when you engage the magnet, it pulls this plunger down, right? And when this plunger goes down, and you can hear how crispy it is, so it obviously died of getting rusty inside. Um, anyway, when that pulls down, you guys can see the, the coil wires. I think you can see the coil wires. Let me zoom in a little. You can see the two coil wires there. Anyway, so when this thing pulls down, yeah, that's a better video. When this pulls downward, this guy here has a little spring behind it. And it did, um, like when I push it up and then you can hear it kind of click down. Um, the click down that's when um, this little copper thing connects to those two anyway there's actually quite a bit of copper in here quite a bit of metal so to speak so I'm I'm thinking that um, that it could it could handle quite a few amps just looking at those contacts and all I mean it it not for a hundred years, but for a while, it should it should be able to handle um, the starter on these guys. This this is is broken now. You can see like this wire's hanging. I broke that off. So um, there it is. So what I've shown you is a few things. First of all, I've shown you um, what these starting solenoids work, how they work. Um, I showed you what they seem to die of, which is rust, and um, <laughs> real rust. And I'm kind of, kind of showing you that, uh, quite honestly, they're they're really not exceptionally well made. Um, they can take a lot of amps, right? That you got a lot of material up there to carry current. Um, as a matter of fact, it looks like the material you have here is stronger. Than the um, lugs on it, so it could it can easily do, in my opinion, a couple hundred amps. It looks like shouldn't have too much trouble with that. Um, are these fixable? I guess if I carefully took it apart, I could have you know kind of scraped things up and all that. But they only cost like four or five bucks each, and you definitely get what you pay for. Not much here, so. Um, when you look at the China quads and you say, why are they kind of cheap junk? Why, why do you find them? I mean, in my case, I found one dead, cut up in pieces and thrown on the side of the road. Why, why do you find that? Why, you, you know, why, are, why do people scrap them out and complete and just get rid of them and so forth? As you go through each and every component, you realize how cheap like this is. And, you know, I bought um, a bunch of CDI units and one of them worked for, I'd not even say five minutes and it started to become intermittent. I luckily bought a spare and I replaced it. But, you know, as you start adding, and those are just electrical components, when you start adding that up, and then you look at the metal, the way the metal rusts and so forth. You, you know, how far, how far from running do you have to get before these things can't be fixed, right? You tow them out back, you leave them in the bushes for a year or to, two, and the rust sets in, you know. And the starting solenoids get shaky and... Um, the connectors for the electronics get shaky 
and before you know it they're they're a lot of work to bring back to life you could get the parts so it's not very expensive but it's a lot of work to bring them on back all right i want to thank everybody for watching and commenting and subscribing please remember to bring to keep your feet down keep your heads up and get out and enjoy each and every day bye now